Okay, so we've already done glycolysis to form pyruvate, and we've already done the link reaction to form acetylcoenzyme A from that pyruvate. Now we're going to look at what happens to that acetylcoenzyme A. So we'll start off with it up here. We know from the last video, or if you've watched the full video, you'll know this as well, that it is a two carbon molecule. Already in the cycle is a four carbon, oh, do you want to say, is a four carbon molecule. That will then cycle round and it will join with this acetyl coenzyme A. That, by the power of basic maths, forms a six carbon molecule. That will then cycle back to form a four carbon. Now, for a six to go to four, it needs to lose two carbons. And it does that by losing it in the form of CO2, because carbons can't just disappear out of nowhere. So we've lost two CO2, but we do gain one molecule of ATP. Now, just like the other two steps, this isn't really a step for producing energy. It's more of a step for producing the proton carriers. And it does that quite well. It produces three molecules of NADH, and it produces one molecule of a new one called FADH2. Now, these both do the same thing. They are proton carriers, as in they start as NAD and FAD. They accept these hydrogens and they take them on to the last step. And the last step is where all of our masses of ATP are produced. The acetyl coenzyme A and 6 carbon 4 carbon cycle, that's kind of irrelevant now because we don't actually use any of these any further. We just use this cycle to carry on producing these byproducts. The ATP, I mean, I suppose it's handy, but it's not enough to be an energy source and the cycle's too slow for it to be useful. And carbon dioxide is poisonous, so that's just expired. Now, I've said in the title that this is how calorie restricted diets and carbohydrate restricted diets actually work. And it is. Because fatty acids, as found in your stored fat when mixed with glycerol, can be directly converted into acetyl coenzyme A. This cuts out the need for glycolysis and the link reaction. Now, I know you're thinking right now, why bother with carbohydrates when we can just eat fat? You can, but it's nowhere near as efficient. We're built to run off glucose, and it's it's how our brains work. Our brains respire, they need the glucose. So we can cut out glucose and just rely on fatty acids, which is how a lot of diets, such as the Atkins or the Cambridge diet, that's how they work. You increase your fat and lower your carbohydrate, but it can result in you losing concentration. Also, anaerobic respiration definitely requires glucose. It only takes place with glycolysis to produce energy. So if there's no glucose, you can't do glycolysis. So we do need some glucose in the diet. We'll get little bits, but you know, don't cut it out completely. Also, if you end up starving yourself too much or you shock your body by completely quitting carbs, you can actually start to use amino acids. And amino acids are the building block of protein. And our protein is stored muscle. So if we continue to not eat any glucose or any carbohydrates, yes, we will use stored fat in the form of fatty acids, but we will also begin to use stored muscle. And we will start protein degradation to make up that energy, which if there's anyone who's looking to be quite muscular and lean, this is why it's best to wean off carbohydrates, not to quit, because you can end up using stored protein. So yeah, there's the scientific look on how this works. All that really matters, though, in the form of biochemistry, is we produce these protein carriers that will... Protein carriers. We produce these proton carriers, which will then go on to the last step to produce our energy.